I've had a lot of time on my hands because, you know, the global pandemic, and I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake. In Australia and Europe, the game has been released early to circumvent disruption to distribution channels caused by COVID-19. So people in places like America haven't actually played this game yet without a review code of some kind. I know how anticipated this game is for a lot of people, so it must be pretty frustrating. If this happened for Kingdom Hearts 3 and people were playing the game weeks before I could, I would move to some remote island and log off all social media to avoid spoilers and cry. Please take my thoughts with a grain of salt. I haven't finished the game yet, but am nearing the end. I won't be talking about major spoilers anyway, so don't worry too much. All gameplay shown will be from trailers or the demo. Also, I've played the original and gotten fairly far, but I've never finished it. I am fairly familiar with the plot though. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> it's out. Uh, well, at least the first installment in a series of indefinite parts. This game covers about the first five hours of the original game, up until our main cast of characters leave the city of Midgar. For those not familiar with the plot of this section of the game, I'll keep it as simple as I can. An eco-terrorist group called Avalanche fights against an evil megacorporation called Shinra to prevent them from killing the planet, known as Gaia. Shinra is harvesting the planet's life stream, or Mako, which is a spiritual energy that gives life to everything on the planet. The original game came out in 1997, so you would have hoped that this kind of environmental message wouldn't be needed anymore, but whoops, it's more relevant than ever in 2020. You play as Cloud, a former soldier, aka member of Shinra's army, and mercenary doing work for Avalanche. Initially in it for the cash, Cloud warms up to his fellow fighters, Barrett, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, and begins to truly believe in the fight for environmental justice. Other important characters are Tifa, a childhood friend of Cloud and the one who gave him the Avalanche work, and Aerith, a flower merchant. I would consider Aerith's strong importance in the game a bit of a spoiler, so I won't talk about her too much, but also, I'm pretty sure you don't find out certain things about her until future installments anyway, so it's not important for this particular game. For now, I'll say she's just a flower merchant who knows a lot of stuff about things that gets her into a lot of trouble. <laughs> so where does the remake's plot deviate from the originals? Well, in a lot of ways. For starters, the remake stretches out 5 hours into about 35 hours. Characters are significantly fleshed out and given a lot of screen time, particularly Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge. In the original game, these three are fairly insignificant characters, but in this game, they're almost as significant as Tifa, Barrett, and Aerith. You learn about their backgrounds, childhood, aspirations, etc. And there's even a bit of romantic chemistry between Jesse and Cloud. I love it all, except the flirtatious stuff. It feels a little bit forced, and it would have been nice if Jesse and Cloud's relationship stayed platonic. The voice acting is pretty good, and it's refreshing to hear new voices for all these characters. Even though the original didn't have voice acting, they've been portrayed in movies and spin-offs by a lot of the same people. I love Wedge's voice actor in particular, aka Badger in Breaking Bad who gives such an endearing performance. Another difference is getting a real sense of the citizens of Midgar, getting amongst them, seeing how they look and dress, act and think about Avalanche. To hear these characters talk so disapprovingly of the attacks on Shinra Mako reactors, to hear how their lives have been impacted by your character, what was once implied in the original is now front and center, and there's a real sense of consequence to Avalanche's actions. Even though the members of Avalanche are always the obvious heroes of the story, I did appreciate the game's exploration of the relationship between Shinra and the the citizens of Midgar, as well as the effects the attacks have on the community. Even though I think Square Enix is doing a good job with most of the plot, there is a lot of Tetsuya Nomura nonsense in this game that I think a lot of people will hate, even if they're accustomed to the usual Final Fantasy weirdness. For those that don't know, Nomura is the director of both Final Fantasy VII Remake and another series called Kingdom Hearts. I love Kingdom Hearts so much, even the plot, but 
it is really indefensibly convoluted, and he's brought that same energy to this game, so be warned. I think a lot of fans will have problems with how Sephiroth, the game's lead antagonist, is portrayed in particular. I knew Namora's name was attached to this though, so it didn't come as much of a surprise. Kingdom Hearts fans lap Namora's nonsense up, but I think Final Fantasy fans are going to be less accepting. I've also heard that the last few chapters of the game have even more convoluted plot elements, but I'm not far enough to comment on that. To touch very briefly on the graphics, the game looks excellent. You can tell they put a lot of effort into making Midgar feel like a massive, lived-in, bustling, dystopian cyberpunk city. Everything is well designed, and true to the original game. I can't explain how amazing it is to see places like Aerith's house fully realised and explorable. The game seems to run pretty well so far, with no noticeable frame drops or graphical issues. The music is astounding. The way Nobuo Uematsu and co have arranged these pieces for such grandiose orchestration is nothing short of awe-inspiring. The classic tunes sound better than ever, and the new stuff is great too, using existing melodies and motifs from other pieces in clever and inventive ways. This has to be one of the strongest elements of the game. Fighting enemies to let the battles begin is exhilarating every time, and I don't see myself getting sick of it anytime soon. I think the gameplay could go either way for a lot of fans, but personally, I'm enjoying the real-time battles. The battle system is a cross between Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts, but don't worry if you're scared by the Final Fantasy XV comparison because it's probably more like the latter. I'm not a full-on hater of Final Fantasy XV, but I'm not into the combat system very much. It feels floaty and unresponsive somehow. In Final Fantasy VII Remake though, the combat is certainly slower than Kingdom Hearts, but still very engaging. Combat revolves around you pressing the box button to use a basic attack, holding it down for a slower but stronger attack, charging up your ATB gauge, and selecting from a list of abilities or items in the same way you would in a Kingdom Hearts game. There's a limit gauge for slowly charging up a powerful attack, and a summon gauge for boss fights if you have summon materia equipped. We'll get to materia a little later if that's confusing. You're able to switch between characters, all of which have very different abilities that serve different purposes, such as Barret being great for long range combat, or Cloud for close range. Nothing is more satisfying to me than switching between characters so seamlessly like fighting as Cloud, then switching to Barret to take out turrets in the distance, then switching to Tifa to take out more enemies, etc etc. Fights haven't been this exhilarating in a Final Fantasy game probably for over a decade, at least in my opinion. So back to the Materia mechanic. Just like the original, you can equip this stuff called Materia to your weapons, which gives you special abilities or spells, or in the case of special summon Materia, summons. Different weapons have a different number of slots, so sometimes you have to decide whether you want better inherent stats for your weapon, or whether you want to use objectively worse weapons, but have more materia slots to use up. It's pretty fun finding materia around Midgar, but I'll tell you what's less fun, the side quests. The game loves to give you incredibly exciting action set pieces and wonderful quiet character moments but then interrupt that with the most basic of basic side quests. Sometimes it'll just be defeat those rats or defeat this mini boss, but those aren't too bad in short bursts because such a fun combat system can do the heavy lifting for a dull task. But when it's one after the other and you'd rather get back to the exciting main story, it can be extremely repetitive. Don't get me started on the fetch quests. They really did kind of pain me. Normally I would just skip the side quests, but in this game the reward for completing them is very worth it, with cutscenes that I swear should just be a part of the main story. It's frustrating that I can't just skip some of this stuff without fear of missing out on important character info. So there's my brief review of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and really enjoying it so far, but I also think there could be a portion of the fanbase that really doesn't like this, either for story reasons or just because they'd rather a turn-based game. I look forward to finishing these last few chapters in the coming days, and if I have a strong opinion on the finale, you might see another video from me. Alright, bye!